Hope you're all doing fine with your health. So today I'm here with one more piece of literature and the name of the literature is No Men Are Foreign. The type of work is poem and it is written by James Kirkup. So as the name itself suggests, British name. So he's a British. So you can just think about how fascinating the language would be of this poem, the words, the structure of the sentence, the expression, adjectives, it, they are just wonderful and fascinating because it is penned down by a British writer. Okay, so the main idea of this poem is to give a message of oneness, universal brotherhood. Well, let us just know what inspired James to pen down this poem. Well, to know that, we should go back to, the, to his era. Okay, so he was born in England and he happened to be a part of World War II. And during World War, if you have studied, obviously we all have studied about World War II, but not on the text, but of the text, there are a lot of things to know about World War II. So it was obligation or kind of, kind of rule that every man would serve his country. Every man would serve in military. So that was the idea, understanding or obligation. But what happened, James was not convinced, was not convinced to be a part of military. Because, you know, now you can guess the title of the poem itself, No Men Are Foreign. So I am talking about the World War II. Because World War II was not to protect one's country. If you look into the history, because, you know, this Nazi, Nazi Hitler army was, the idea of Hitler army was not, the intention of Hitler army was not to protect his country, but to just conquer the other world by, you know, warring on them. So that was totally unnecessary. So he, James was not convinced to join the army. Why? Because of his conscience. So such people, during the World War II, such people who object, who object to join the army based on their moral and conscious were called conscientious objectors. Please look at this word. See this? How do you pronounce it? This is not conscience. No, this is conscience. 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 What is conscience? The conscience is the mind, the energy, the spirit of human soul that guides what is right, what is wrong. The differences between what is right, what is wrong. It's called conscious. Conscience. Okay. So, this is noun. Look at the adjective of conscientious. Con conscientious. Conscientious. This is an adjective form. Okay. So, those people who objected to join the World War II or the other word to military, they were called conscientious objector. So, he was a, James was conscientious objector, he was called. And why he objected to join the military? Maybe it was in his mind. Because no men are foreign. We are all one. How can I, you know, point gun at the man, the other man from who, who is just because standing at the other side of the border? How do I, you know, take him down? Because no men are foreign. Well, this should be the result of compassion. When a man has compassion, you know, then he cannot hurt anybody because he sees himself in everybody. Okay, so that should be the reinforcement, the influence, the inspiration behind the product of such a wonderful poem, what we have. So that is all about James. He was British and he had happened to be a part of World War II. So he couldn't join the military because of his conscience. And so, but it was compulsory to show something. So he served in uh, Forest Commission. Yeah, he happened to serve in Forest Commission, 
but not in military but anyway everybody had to serve something but he objected to join the military so he was he was he, he was put under the list of conscientious objector if you address somebody hey he is very conscientious means he knows you know he is always concerned with what is right what is wrong okay and that's how we use this word so that is all about the gems so coming to the poem what do we have in this poem well looking at the title itself you could get uh, it should be the uh, idea of oneness universal brotherhood no men are foreign and this title is an excellent and quintessence of vasudeva kutumbakam what the idea addressed by shri krishna in bhagavad gita vasudeva kutumbakam vasudeva kutumbakam means all world is one family so everybody is our kin and kin so there is no point in identifying ourselves with the, you know special boundary or the other one has a enemy there is no such point well so that is the main theme of this poem so looking at the other poem other themes oneness is the crux theme of this poem so what is oneness as i said when person inculcates this philosophy of oneness he can see nobody as different everybody from every corner of the world seems his kith and kin so every mother seems his mother every brother like his brother wherever he is and wherever he is from but when oneness happens everybody appears so joyful and like his you know kith and kin if that happens with every man think about it there is no room for any cruelty any exploitation or any crime or any such you know unaccepted anti social practices it would be the world would be made a wonderful place to live on so that is the first thing and move to the second war war is discussed here the consequences of war the ideology behind the war so war serves nobody war is very expensive let us consider the modern wars like world war 1 and world war 2 so war never serves the purpose okay so what happened the casualty of the war is just unthinkable the output of the uh, the product of the war is just unthinkable you know the man who wins the war is lost the man who lost the war is dead so what is the bottom line neither of them win that is the point neither of them wins here so that is the other idea is discussed in this poem and moving to the next one the idea of world citizen the other way to put it forth is as universal brotherhood so universal brotherhood and also kuempu says vishwamanava kuempu says vishwa manava is no different from what james is trying to convey here vishwa manava universal brotherhood vasudeva kutumbakam and world citizenship they are all fall under the same tree the same tree of mankind the same tree of compassion so that is the third theme discussed in this poem so if if you consider all these three themes you can just make it out right now what would be the content of this poem and whether the title suits appropriately to the content of course it does and that is the beauty of british work there is no room for any confusion but a wonderful combination because after all it is his mother tongue keeping this these things in mind if we move into the poem text of the poem is very simple but very effective very explicit extraordinary you know expression and uh, emotion obviously but as we exercise the text the language 
we go across a set of vocabularies. Most of the vocabularies employed there are friendly and well known, but there are a few which may sound new to you that I have picked and written here on the board for our reference. So that when we go to the text, there won't be any hiccups to, you know, as we move on, there shall be no any hiccups to, the, to break our speed, all right? So look at these words, few vocabularies, as you go across when you exercise the text. So few vocabularies. So at the beginning, you come across this word, dispossess, dispossess. The meaning of the dispossess means deprive. Deprive means take away, kittukollu, take away, take away from somebody. So that is dispossess. Hey, let us just slice this word. Take this off, read only this. Possess. Possess. Make it adjective. Possessive. If we use this word to address few people, right? If somebody is, hey, he is possessive. She is possessive. Possessive. Huh? If you had a suffix here, I, V, E, it becomes possessive. Or if you add I, V, I, O, N, it becomes possession. What is this possession, possessive, possess? Huh? Wealth. If you address a, he has a lot of possession, means he has a lot of wealth, money, whatever it is. Either material or the other way. Okay. Here, possess means to have it. Dispossess, to take it away. All right. It is work. So, this process means deprive, means take it away. Next, defile. Defile. So, define means polluting. That is also a word. Next, outrage. Outrage means destroy. So, these are the few words. There are just three new words you go across as you exercise the poem. Okay? So, now we have, you know, we have dealt with all the required primary details. And now we are ready to move on with the text. So no country is safe if as long as there is an idea of war. If any country thinks of bringing peace through war, it's not possible. But defending ourselves is not dangerous. Defending ourselves is not a part of this poem, okay? This poem talks about only raging war. Especially keeping World War II in mind. As I said, James, he happened to be a part of World War II. And as I said, he had also objected to join the military force. So as a result, we got this wonderful poem. So his idea was very much relevant to that period of time. But right now, it's not the case. It's entirely different because every country is very powerful now. Every country has its own system, different system, and also we have UNO, United Nations Organizations. But back then, during Second World War II, there was no UNO, so any country could prey on any other country. So that was the chaotic period of time the world was in. But now we have UNO, we have international government, international court we have. So, so we are living in a very comfortable era right now because there is no such thing can happen. If there is any country who is exercising such things, shall be brought under the international law, which may be, you know, not in the favor of any country for that case. So right now it is okay. But if you look at back to the Second World War, it was very, very inhuman. So that's all we have from today's presentation. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next session with one more piece of literature. Thank you.